Hi, Manisha. How are you? Long time. All right, everyone. <clears throat> I have to apologize for the poor voice. <laughs> I'm recovering from a, from a bout of illness and only just have managed to be audible. <laughs> I wanted to do this over the weekend, but... Um, no one could hear me over the weekend. <laughs> oh, that's nice. So it's nice to see so many faces uh, on today's live. Um, let me just adjust this a bit. Yeah. I hope you can see my desk full of hens. <laughs> So today we're going to uh, jump into some hand drawing, uh, hand drawing fun, and we'll try and um, we'll try and see if we can make a um, some sort of a, a a small composition for a greeting card, a Mother's Day card, and um, we'll see how that goes. But before we get to the card part of it, we'll try to understand. Um, hens as a as a bird okay and some little things about a hen that we need to keep in mind before we get into drawing them in different poses and such so before we start let me show you some of the hens I do this is on my post you may have noticed some of my earlier hens this was from last year so this was uh, a rooster I did I, what I enjoyed most are the hens where we are quite loose with uh, the brush strokes. Not, nothing is precise. You will notice the features are not detailed. Uh, but at the same time, certain characteristic um, hen vibes are very clear. So for example, strokes that indicate feathers, the plume, um, and very, very uh, importantly, the the red uh, kind of the I'm not sure if it's a crown but the red parts of the hen's head is very important that's the distinguishing mark right? that makes a hen a hen or in this case a rooster a rooster now besides doing this you can also do an exercise in just ink so these are my hens in different poses and I found this exercise to be just as much fun as watercolor if not more fun <laughs> very loose we've just stuck to the outline and a few um, squiggles to show in between feathers but this sort of an exercise may be a good thing to do before you get to the paint part of it um, when you start painting these shapes the structure of the hen should be rather clear in your mind if you want to directly go in with a brush and paint but if you're looking at drawing the outline before going in brush and paint, then that's fine. Then there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it'll just take you a little more time to complete whatever you're trying to do because there's one um, uh, there's one one step of drawing the outline. Okay, so hens usually are walking, strutting, or they are pecking at something, or they have this very odd, quirky um, look. Uh, you know just like straight bolt up where they're looking for some sort of predator or some sound you look at this one okay something's got the interest that that sort of a look so um if you keep those those kind of expressions in mind you can do a lot okay so those were our hens the hens that i tried um, making last year and this was a lovely one i just uh, went ahead and put into i mean i put a coat into it and um, it just uh, it seemed like a perfect coat for the for the hen i drew so this is ink and and paint um, whereas these are only um, watercolor direct watercolor without ink no outlines right same thing here these are all uh, direct watercolor 
no pencils or um, inks ink now what you can do so let me start off with the basic shape I'm going to go on to a nice new page where we can try out some shapes and for this I would recommend that you go to Pinterest and look for hens in Pinterest and, and I'm not talking about um, illustrations I'm talking about actual hens the real animal pictures photos of the real animal so if you in my on my Pinterest um, among my boards I do have one on birds this is an this is an exercise in observation the shape of a hen let me look at one sideways yeah the shape of a hen is rather um, the bulk of the body is triangular okay it's triangular and then it has this uh, tail feathers at one end and a head at the other end now this head can be yeah so this is the sideways profile of a hen you have a shape like this you have a neck which is also kind of triangular and a head at the end this is your basic hen in a side profile look the same shapes you have to modify slightly when the direction of the hen changes so let's take another hen all right so here I'm going to look for a hen that's okay, this is the one that I drew but you can see this is a front facing hen now the triangular part of the body you only see this part in front right so this too is a bit but it's a it's a it's a it's not as wide a triangle it's more or less like this the neck triangle becomes this way you have some extra uh, girth this is the back side of that of the hen and then you have the feet which are in an awkward angle in this case okay and that's it you keep your hen head over here put a beak put your plumage that's one same way you put a plumage here sorry you put the crown there put a small beak and the legs so let's try okay let's try sitting in now the mound here, the triangle is slightly different. You have a mound that is this way and a head that is this way. Okay, so there's your hen's head. There's the crown. No need to worry about feet because this is a hen that's um, on the ground. Okay. So these are the shapes that you have to play with. Let's take another hen. Okay, so this hen is facing forward and even the beak is a little bit. So here we have a shape that's again triangular largely. There's the, there's the back. There's a little excess here. This curved triangle. The beak comes here. Now in this case, the hen's eye is slightly visible on both sides because it's a front-facing hen. And the crown is barely visible. But from the side, you do see the red um, marks that are below the beak. Okay, So drawing these kind of shapes is really, really good. It gives you a very, um, a very clear way to proceed. And not get caught in the in the colors sometimes the colors are just too many and you start to see too many details so if you want to bring it down you have to bring it down to shapes let's take another shape mm, okay let's take this hen okay we can't see much of it uh, I'm trying to look at a hen which is different okay yeah this one's a, <laughs> a wonky hen now this hen very similar to the one that I drew initially has a nice side triangular profile but the head is not doing this it's not a sideways head it's a head which is turned inward 
uh, an almost front facing head so okay so you're combining something like this with something like this and that's the that's the part that you have to now merge okay so let's see that's your body in fact this end is quite triangular and then this triangle instead of going upward is going almost slanting you have your tail feathers here you have a leg going out you have another leg just just sticking up and hence love these funny poses when they walk on top of the head here okay i'm overlapping here but there's a beak here and a head and some crown there and the little red marks overall the basic shape indicates that the neck the neck needs to cross this line okay the neck needs to cross this line other significant feathers would be um, some over here definitely a feather here that's about it you got the basic shape right now let's try and do try doing this directly in watercolor having done this sort of an exercise with pencil let's try doing this with watercolor okay so i'm going to try the same hen directly in watercolor now this hen is rather white or gray as a base and has these little marks of black on them so don't go into drawing every detail again we are going to simply show a few and the rest is going to just be um assumed i mean in the sense you're going to assume it's there even though you're not painting it all right i'm starting with my size 6 okay what i will do is i will take a shade of black and water it down to a very very light gray okay and i'm going to take this shape try and build on the shape exactly what i did with pencil but now with a brush okay so there's my body triangle very very light gray because we will probably have a black going over it okay then you have these tail feathers which you can actually um use strokes to achieve like this and that's it no more okay then we come to the neck this funny guy or this funny girl has got a neck that's sitting this way okay sideways and a little curve here crossing the line and that's it that's your outline of a hen done so if you notice i've not put a gray every single place my basic outline has ink but in between i have left gaps the reason is if i don't leave these gaps you will not see the gray that forms the feathers right if i have paint the whole thing gray then i will have to go a second time around to show the feathers which i don't want to next you're going to take some yellow ochre and i prefer yellow ochre but you could you could easily use um another color the mix yellow ochre and with the tip of your brush just the tip you press down and this becomes very thick which we don't want you press down even a little too much and your your lines will become a little 
too thick for this this hen that's it same way you're going to have a leg that's sticking out from here that's it don't go into too much detail stop right there okay next the main features now notice that we are actually doing just the main features let's go on to some red a mild red not something too too dark mild red because we will come back with some darker shades and we don't want to directly right now itself put all the dark shit so there's your oh my brown my gray has not even dried there's the crown of the hen's head on the head on the hen's head that's it can make it a little bigger yeah that's it leave it at that if it bleeds it bleeds don't get worried okay this is this this happens every time you paint loosely there will be some bleeding and you don't have to worry about it that's part of the style okay now we are left with just the beak for that i take a nice bright yellow or even a yellow ochre will work okay if i do it right now it's going to it's going to mix i mean it's going to bleed to the red and we won't see the beak so let's wait off meanwhile <clears throat> let's go back let's add some details and for this i'm using a smaller brush size 3 okay let's take the same gray that we took earlier i'm going to show you some of my mixing here okay this is black and since i don't have space my palette is all Okay, I'm going to clean up a little bit of my palette here. Make space. There you go. Yeah. All right. Where was I? I was at creating black, uh, gray. So here's your black, which you mix mix with water and you make gray. Now this is darker than the gray we first applied. Okay. and we have a thinner brush you can start drawing little hesitant dots like literally like blobs but if possible in some sort of a line structure why are we doing this just because it does have some some sort of a line okay then in here we have thin ones so they are so thin that we can almost see just lines similarly there are some lines here out here i like to put a few darker shades because this is where the head ends and there are always some feathers that move nicely where the head ends another place i would add a few big feathers is here remember i told you that this is where you will see maybe the wing so add add that little bit of color there's a little darkness here now before we put in the details for these parts let's add a little bit of darkness darker feathers okay darker than the ones this is like your le second layer of paint <coughs> <coughs> here instead of feathers i'm just adding lines i see lines i add lines that's it here so nothing this is just an indicator that okay yeah there are some this hen has some marks on it small little lines just indicate that there could be lines on this feathers just a few on the light gray areas 
enough is more than enough. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Next thing. Let's take a little deeper black. Slightly deeper. And put in the eyes. Now in this case, the hen actually has a slight bit of eye on both sides. Visible. Normally, only one eye is visible. In this case, you can see more than one. And then we take yellow or yellow ochre, whichever is brighter. It's not lemon yellow usually, because that you can hardly see. Next, go in with a little bit of red again. This time we are actually going in with deeper values. Okay. So, we are going to shape things better. One more thing that's left to do is that you should add some, um, you know, a highlight of sorts. So I would go with the grey and just darken the back of the legs and under the under the claws a bit, just darken it slightly. And here you could even add little, little horizontal lines. Makes it more realistic. You can always go back another round. I could stop right here, not go ahead, right? But if if you feel you want to add more detail, definitely add more. So here there could be some detail. Only because this hen is so detailed. Okay, not otherwise. Otherwise I wouldn't even bother with this. But because this hen has no other color and all these little dots seem to be making up a large part of what the hen is. We're just adding that in. And that's it. Towards the end you may find a little bit of darkness around here indicating where the leg muscles begin but that's it and that's it leave your hand there there's one hand right let's try now this one's a funny 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 one let's try another just more um more like what we want to do on the card so this is a hand that isn't walking okay uh, it's a it's a seated hen and I like it really I, I the the reason I like it a lot is because this is exactly what we want to capture on our cards right a mother hen and a chick here you have to be careful because you are going to first draw the chick then the hen okay hey Rupesh nice to see you online So let's go first draw draw the chick okay and again very watery gray very very watery gray you don't want to get too dark um there's the outline okay chick has a body outward it goes outward a little bit of a leg outline of a wing shape of the face is this way and that's it. Okay, this part is not even visible. Let me just add it. Head is turned away. Alright. And that's it. That's the shape of the chick. We can drop in at this point because the, the paint is wet. You can drop in a little bit of darkness at certain points. Just to give it that... Um, this you can't add this in later because it will dry right the gray will dry so the black is not going to show i'm also adding in the eye and some parts of gray over here not too much again not exact it is not going to be an exact representation of what you're trying to or what you're looking at so don't don't even try to achieve that leave the chick there now we can go on to the hen 
Now this time around, if it helps, take a pencil and just mark out where your hen is going to be. So your hen is looking. We still have a, a mouth to, um, sorry, a beak to add here, and we will add that in. But imagine that this is where then the beak of the hen comes in. That's the red part on the crown of the head. And there's the head. The head's going to come down. There's going to be the red part under. Okay, and that's the hen's eye. Not perfect. Okay, something here. That's it. All of this is just feathers. So we can just put that in with brush strokes. Now, the rest of the hen is ra rather large. It's like it's sitting... Okay, it's sitting uh, quite... Um, quite raised at the back. There. You can do this. This is this would be in fact something that will help you be able to put down that paint when we want to put it. So going on to the hen, let's get, change brushes. I'm changing to a size 6 again. We're going to apply <clears throat> the base yellow or yellow ochre. A very watery yellow ochre. Really watery. I'll show you this. Okay. So here's my watery yellow ochre. Into this, I will put some other color, but later. Right now, I just want a watery look. And I'm going to give this <clears throat> outline uh, a nice base coat. The outline is important. You need to get paint on the outer most parts of your hen because that is what is going to stay right that's what you're going to see as the outline eventually you will not have pencil marks so without pencil marks where is the outline the outline is where your paint has been deposited right and then once your outline is done okay we need one for the head as well yeah once this is done then the rest of the yellow ochre you lay has to be in bits and pieces so for example I just put strokes here. That's it. I leave white spaces. Then I take a little bit of yellow ochre, mark this portion. Okay, and I leave this with white white spaces. This is important because without the white spaces, you're not going to be able to. Um, you're going to have a flatter looking hen. So let's put a little color here. layer one okay after layer one is done while we wait we can address maybe the chick let's change the size of the brush chick needs a slightly yellow beak so I'm taking yellow and putting it right there it's a very tiny beak same for the hen you can take the same brighter yellow even put a little bit of orange into it and put in that beak it's a very shapely beak take off the excess and use the same paint to there you go yeah I like this color I think I'm going to use this color on in other parts of the hen because I see a lot of yellow, bright yellow on this hen. Okay. Hey Alka, how are you? So nice to see you here in the afternoon on a Monday. <laughs> For all the times I could pick up <laughs> to, to go do a live, I had to think of a Monday afternoon. <laughs> okay. I'm on to the, the, um, the red on the hen's face, which I 
Honestly, I love this party. It's so cool. It looks so pretty. It makes the hen a hen. Like until then, it's a bird, but it's not a hen. Until you have these, and a lot of us, even me, I mean, I was I was under the understanding that only only a rooster had this, but that's the wrong understanding actually. A hen has it, and a rooster has a has a really big one. That's it. But a hen does have it. A hen does share that. Okay, that done. Let's go on to the brighter colors on the hen. So, yellow. Remember this yellow which we made. We kind of created for the for the beak and for the yeah for the beak. So it's basically a yellow, bright yellow with a little bit of orange, just a little bit, just a tad of orange, and it's still rather watery. Okay, so we're going to use. Oh, I forgot to change the brush. I need a big brush. It's a big hen, so I like using my number six for the plume, for the feathers. Now be very, very loose at this point. You don't want to show the color everywhere. It's only at certain places. So I see it here. Then I see a little bit on this side. Okay. So I realize that the top of the head. I have to be careful. This is all wet. That's it. So I'm not going to put it everywhere. That's the important part. You're not going to put it everywhere. Let me take some. It gets darker here. And then here you have these. bright colors another place i notice is at the bottom at the base here right so you can see some dark spots there a little bit here just a little more of that and put some here it'd be nice to have a little bit of deep color around the chick it brings the chick to the forefront right and if you notice parts of the hen that are around the chick are dark so <laughs> they are aren't they halka they are i just love them once i start started it was just i couldn't stop all right i have something called an indian red at the in my palette it's not really a red it's more like a reddish brown you know like the like the mud we see at some places i like that color because that's kind of a henny color <laughs> combined with yellow it makes for really lovely shades on a hen i don't otherwise use that color i'll be honest uh, i'm not very fond of indian red but apply your strokes very randomly unevenly rather unevenly now in this case unfortunately i because i have a pencil outline the pencil outline is going to be seen somewhere all right so i'm not worrying too much about it i'm just going to leave it this way indian red with a little bit of yellow gives me this lovely shade again watered down ah i i don't use very deep colors for these layers here i'm only placing this at the ends that's it and a little bit here because i see it here seems to have a few feathers here that lead up to the no the head yeah but be careful around the head there is a little of this around the chick as well that makes the chick a little more prominent see some over here and that's it this side of the hen is relatively light you'll notice probably because the sun is also on the hen at that at that side but a few light strokes don't hurt her huh? they really add some texture 
texture around the neck of the hen is very important. You need to see some because the feathers are moving in a direction there, right? They're turning and they're going downward. So this is nice to show this, this um, set of feathers. Okay, that's about it. I'm going to leave this as it is. Leave that as it is. And now, I'll give the chick a little bit of, or maybe the eye of the hen. So the eye of the hen is going to be black as it is in the picture. But not very deep black, more a grey. With my fine brush, please make sure you have a fine brush for this, a fine point for this. It's a slightly oblique eye because this is a sideways look. Slightly oblique. And the hen has a few lines around the eye, you'll notice. Just a few. And these are nice to capture because it, it stresses, it brings a focus to the eye. Another part that you must add very gently is a little bit of a nose. Um, or the small little apertures for nose. Okay. And the rest I'd leave it. Now darkening the rest of it should be with color, not with black. I would say something like a red. Take your red again. Deepen it. Now when I say deepen it, it will be just that there will be less water. And give it a few strokes, not too much. The moment it becomes too much, it covers up the previous red and then there's no use really. A stroke here, a swirl there. Yeah, that's it. And stop. That's it. We're going to do the same thing with a little bit of orange. I'm just going to draw the outline of the top part. And that's it. As far as the chick is concerned, it has feet that we can't really see too much. But chick feet are actually so wide, you'll be amazed how wide chick feet are the angle of the other foot it's it's actually rather awkward but you can't see much of it because of the darkness leave it at this one last thing I'd, I'd recommend for the um, yeah Amit I'll share it don't worry I love to add these little black strokes. Okay, now this is the grey, the grey, not black, grey. I love adding these strokes because it adds that texture that the cheek has. Okay, because it doesn't have so many clear features. And without these little dashes, you can't see... A chick as a chick. Yeah. How does that look? Last bit of business would be to add a little bit of the darkest hues. And the darkest hues are brown. In this case, I'm going to take a burnt umber. And I'm going to be as sparing as possible with this. I need only a few strokes in certain places. Not in a lot. This adds a lot of character. Okay, I'm going to put it here because I want the beak to stand out. The rest is just... where the light is not touching. So you'll notice the light doesn't touch only a certain side of the hen. And we're going to keep that side. The brown's on that side. This side mostly. So this one has a nice brown patch. Yeah. 
I'll dilute this a little bit and just put a few strokes here because this is looking a little like it's been ignored. Yeah, in fact, I'll just dilute it and keep it that way. It looks a little ignored, if you know what I mean. Although that's not what, what we're doing. There. Shape of the head is not coming out as well as I hoped. So let's add some brown to bring it out. Yeah. All of this is going to dry really, really light. So, um, so it won't look as vibrant as it is looking right now. So there is one hen. Now let's get on to, this is actually a really pretty one for a Mother's Day card, right? <laughs> I should have reserved it for <coughs> the actual card. Nonetheless, let's go on to, I have a few sheets of watercolor paper. So this is not watercolor paper, this is just normal drawing paper, which I... Um, always use for practice. This is watercolor paper. So usually the watercolor paper's texture really um, helps bring out the details in the in the hen which we otherwise don't see very clearly on normal paper. It, uh, paint spreads much better on a watercolor on a watercolor sheet. So let's try let's look at a few mother hens and see whether we can pick up something we'd like to imitate. This is a nice one. The hen is quite colorful but I'm not very pleased with the head. The head is front facing. I'm not very keen on a front facing head. Oh, this is nice. Again a brownish hen so maybe we can change the color. Uh, let's see if we have something that has a nice color. Oh this is a nice color. This is nice. How about this? Let's try this. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and fit. It's a small sheet, okay? I'm not, I'm not using a big sheet at all. I'm using a small sheet and I'm trying to fit my hen in this space so that I can um, write something on top, okay? So let's say we want the hen to fit in here. That's the back of the hen. Now we don't, we can't see the rest of the hen, but we're going to imagine it. Okay. The hen comes this way. And then it's got these little chicks sticking out. One sitting down. With a beak. One standing with a beak. One here with a beak. Okay, so tentative outline is just to make sure that we are placing it correctly. And this one disappears into the mother hens. Now the hen itself is quite majestic. We got to make her nice and big. She'll be wide. Maybe we can bring her in a little more here here bring the tail bigger make it bigger yeah maybe move okay I'm gonna I'm just placing a few things here huh? before I start I'm moving okay confusing now So let's move some of these guys forward. Allow the chicks to come forward a bit. And this one sits here as it is, so that's fine. The hen can come out nicely here. 
bring the head up. Nice big eye. Yep. Okay, so this is all rough. I'm going to just erase off my pencil marks and make it as light as possible. You just want a guide. Just a guide. Okay, first things first, let's get on with the cheeks because the cheeks are whitish. Now, these are white cheeks, but we can make them yellow. I don't know if you can see them, but they are actually white. Not sure if you can see it, but these are actually white with gray cheeks. But we're going to make them yellow cheeks for our card. Take, oops, let me just bring my palette here, my paints here. Keep my picture out, you can see it later. I will just focus on the actual. Yeah. What is it? The color I'm taking is um, lemon yellow, a watery lemon yellow. I don't need any eraser marks here. Watery lemon yellow, we are going to give the cheeks a shape. Okay, there's a shape. There's another one with the shape here. And there is one shape lying here. So this is blocking actually. I'm blocking out the, the parts of the chick that I don't want to mix up with the hen. The hen, I'm going to make it a black and white hen. How about a black and white one? Hmm? Or shall we do something like this hen? Brown and black. Yeah, different colors. So if that's the case, I will still start with yellow ochre. Watery yellow ochre. And give my hen a shape. Avoid going close to the cheeks because that's going to smudge. So let's get on with the rest of the hen. Base color, so don't worry too much about it. It's just to almost like marking out the shape of the hen. There's a um, a very clear wing out here and some bits of yellow here but I'm uh, I'm tentative with the yellow markings because I don't want the chicks that are not dry to get yellow ochre on them yeah okay while we're waiting let's get on to the bright red so this is going to be red um, scarlet to this I'm adding a little bit of carmine or yeah carmine just to make it slightly pink uh, the, the, the red can be a little too orangish and I don't want an orangey shape Okay, so now this whole thing is actually red. Can you believe? This whole part is in fact red. And let's leave it that way. Come in with the detail later. 
the beak is not as yellow as we expected it's almost orange so we're going to take that little bit of orange mark out the beak that's it little too orange yeah. okay the base of our hen is done <coughs> now we get on to the other details for the cheek I like to put in a little bit of yellow ochre now since this cheek is still quite wet this is going to work very well see my yellow ochre is going to blend with certain portions of the back of the cheek or the wet portions of the cheek it makes the cheek look very furry now this cheek is already dried so i'm i'm going to just put little small marks not much use the same yellow ochre to put in some feet so the cheek have feet like this okay, you can see some feet there's one sticking out here and you can put some beak which is orange in color so orange beaks are here there's one here but it's wet and there's one here okay what's next let's add some browns okay we're going in for some brown which is um, burnt umber and a little ye um, yellow ochre and let's add some definition to this hen here strokes these are just a few brush strokes make that brown a little lighter and start putting in a few shades along the body same brown just that you are you've diluted it a bit and now you to be a little gentle around this cheek so that the cheek doesn't turn brown the cheek is in fact yellow We're going to come back and, and put a few feathers on top of the chick, but for now, just the outline will do. Okay, what's next? Brown in the back. Now, this is all imagination. We don't have a reference photo with the pictures, so let's put some brown. Now, remember, I told you that the neck has to have extend beyond the back, that is important. I'm adding my brown, yellow ochre, I'm putting in those, yeah, this is important, you need to see the neck of the chicken, of the hen, okay, brown and yellow ochre again, and let's put in some nice big ones here. some huge ones at the back because the back feathers are actually quite dark in most um, hen you will notice and the prominence is in the front on the neck and at the back it's just an observation I've made uh, you can of course check that out yourself look at reference pictures and see whether that's something you observe as well but do what you feel you want to capture. I love capturing the the tail which is dark. I really 
I like I I like to usually have my tails dark. My hen tails dark. <laughs> Must clarify all that. Okay, I'm taking a little bit of black, putting it into the brown and developing a darker brown. There you go. This is what I mean by I like the tails to feature dark feathers. Now you can add a few of these over here. Like I said, some of that darkness also comes in the neck. Some on the back, very few. But as you apply, your brush will run out of um, will run out of pigment, and the shade you get is going to be quite light. You can apply that light shade on the body of the hen if you want. Otherwise, just keep it this way. I think maybe just a little bit of yellow ochre alone. Let me try yellow ochre here. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, that sounds good. What's next? I like a dark shade over here at the bottom where the chick is sitting. So it's why do I, I mean the reason I do this is because that standing out is so important to see the chick. Right? So important. While we wait, take the same blackish brown mix and let's put in some the nostril or the the thin line that forms the mouth. There's a little darkness here and of course the eye. I told you, you need nice round lines around the eye. The hen has these marks. Go back in with a little bit of red, brighter red, not the same red that we made earlier. It was more watery, a little more contrast. So we want more pigment, less water and highlight a few areas here. Not highlight, deepen a few areas here. I wouldn't call it highlight. Same way, there you see it. Curves here. Touch up a few things here. And that's it. Leave the dark and the light to both be visible. I'm not happy with this. Chicks. Now getting onto the chicks. Let's put in the same blackish brown. On the... And the cheek eyes seem to be like just big black things. Then I would prefer that we use a lighter brown with the black. It just makes for less um, harsh looking eyes. And slightly oval. There'll be a mark here few lines here. There's a little bit of a nose. Water down the brown. And now apply it near the head of the cheek. Put in a few lines here. Just a few to indicate feathers now here in this case in this hen's case some of the hen's feathers are covering the chick the chick is hiding 
right so we want to show that with a few feathers so you can draw a few feathers overlapping the chick that's it this chick needs a few feathers And that's it let's give this a little bit of a, a raw umber wash at the bottom to indicate that they are on some surface just a light wash I would go one step further and just put a little bit more black. I like a deep shade in the feathers here. Just a bit. I want this a little darker. Maybe it's gotten too dark. But that's okay. I like adding a few little details here. A little bit of in fact this part I just Okay, with that done, the only thing left to do is add a message. You can add something on top. Lettering I love to do um, in, in watercolor itself. Something like... Um, try something I like keeping to the colors that we used in the actual <coughs> I'll be back Some examples of lettering that you can use on cards, Mother's Day cards, are, are like this. Home is where mom is. And this is probably a nice one. I like this. Uh, happy Mother's Day to the one who rules the roost. <laughs> um, you are clucking awesome. Home is where mom is, is a good, good one. So for this, basically what I'm doing is I'm writing the lettering in um, home is where mom is. So I'm going to write the lettering first. Thank you. 
and then I put in a little bit of uh, I'm not sure what color this is but I darken the bottoms it's another thing that makes lettering look really lovely in paint the fact that you can add a little bit of <laughs> my little ones are up it's time for this mama to go <laughs> so this is what I would do So mum is written, but I'm going to have to do the rest of it in ink. What I will do is, I will keep a sheet over this. I can't afford to mess it up. So I won't write home is where. I like writing backwards because I, I like marking my spaces correctly. It just helps. But when you're doing this, remember to be really spelling, uh, really worried about the spelling. When we write backwards, we usually tend to forget our spelling. Or rather, it sits right in our heads. And then when we put it there, it just gets mixed up yeah what you can do with this is uh, take a card if you have ready cards which are folded Otherwise, you can um, simply fold chart paper, um, not chart paper, cardstock. I have a right, red card here, and these these sheets were cut to size. So this is what I would do. Right, place it on. Put in a few glue dots of glue. Check your card to make sure it, it, it isn't inverted. I do this all the time. I stick things and then realize that it's inverted. Paint is wet, so be careful. And that's one card because of the time we lost initially. I don't have more time, already crossed the hour. But you can do a lot of these fun things. So if you do sh sh draw just a hen or one of these, one of these hens. These are, by the way, just cutouts on which I drew hens. Okay. So suppose let's take this hen for example. If you decide that you want to have a cutout of this hen. Draw it on a piece of paper. I'm going to show you how it will look if you cut out the shape neatly and decided to paste it directly onto cardstock. Uh, cutting shapes this way whether it is to make stickers or it is to make cards it's a skill you will have to scissor skill that is just amazing i mean i love doing this i love cutting to shape it makes the picture really pop
See what I'm doing? You can cut watercolor paper this way too. It's just a little harder. This is drawing paper, so it's a lot easier to cut. Now what you would do with something like this is you can take another card. Maybe green, I don't know. No, maybe not green. Maybe yellow. Let's see. Play around. And paste your hen here. You can have your chicks too. Okay, these chicks are a little disproportionate. These they're too big. But if you decide to have smaller cheeks paste them here okay somewhere like this and have your message put there yeah a lot of little things like this i enjoyed putting this writing this out cutting it this way and placing a nice big mother hen this way this is also a great card idea you know so you can decide how you want to make this look uh how you want to make this work whichever way Figure out what you enjoy most. Figure out the detail you like most, the colors you enjoy creating, and then place everything the way you like it. Okay, it's a journey of a lot of discovery. <laughs> um, and that's a hand for you. I will post if possible more pictures, but that's... Um, that's a watercolor hen for a Mother's Day card. Hope you all have enjoyed this. And um, let me know if I can sort out, clarify, um, or uh, answer questions on a watercolor hen. Uh, if you have any questions at us. Thanks everyone. Hope to see you all in a live soon. Bye.